Hi, Laura Donnie here with another Kingdom Conversation. Today I want to talk about my beautiful Jesus. And you know, one of the things I want to point out is how in the Old Testament we have seen all types of symbolisms and typographies of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there's probably not a greater one, at least for me, than when we talk about Joseph. You know, when we get to heaven, you know, we first want to see Jesus. But isn't it true that we all have somebody that we are looking forward to having a conversation or two or three or four with? And Joseph will definitely be one of those top five people that I want to have a conversation with. I really admire Joseph. And I admire so much of who he is and how he directs me to live my life today. Now, it's interesting that the name Jesus and um, Joseph are very similar, not as similar as Joshua and Jesus are, but both of them are deliverers. And I'm going to show you how Joseph was the type and shadow of Jesus Christ as our deliverer. So first, I just want to always remind you, have the word of God with you. you got to get into the word so that the word can get into you. And while I'm all about great preaching, um, I am going to say it until I go home into the kingdom. Most of what I've learned has been spent in time just studying the scriptures and letting the Holy Spirit be my greatest teacher. You know, I've said it before, and it's worth saying again, that the reason it's so important to read all of the Bible is that there's a trail that runs through all of its pages. And what may not be answered in one part of the Bible as to the why of what happened, it's interesting that you can pick it up in another part of the Bible. And when it comes to Joseph, this is a great reminder of how that's true. So our story you know, in this kingdom conversation of my beautiful Jesus, it really starts off um, in, I have it here. It's in Genesis, okay? Um, Genesis 37 through chapter 50. It's a lot of chapters. Bible has a lot to say about Joseph. Well, why wouldn't it? Because the Bible has everything to say about our beautiful Jesus. So the story of Joseph begins in um, chapter 37, and it may end in chapter 50, but guess what? It isn't until you get all the way over into Psalms 105 that you get an inkling as to the why of what happened to Joseph. But first, let me talk about the comparisons of Joseph and Jesus. Well, we know that Joseph was favored by his father. We know that Joseph was hated by his brothers. In fact, they hated him so much that they sold Joseph as a slave. And because he was upright and a man of deep integrity before God. See, sometimes the world thinks that you can just be a man of integrity apart from God. No, Joseph was a man with integrity because of his devotion to God. And because of his devotion to be a man of integrity and honor before God, he was falsely accused and he was put into a prison. Can I just say we're already hearing a lot <laughs> about the Lord Jesus? But then we know that Joseph, in the fullness of time, was raised to be the deliverer of Egypt. Wow. You know, we know that Jesus is and was favored by his father, hated by his brothers, sold as a slave, falsely accused and sent to prison, and he was raised as the deliverer of all mankind. You know, I always like to see Jesus in all of the scriptures, hence the name, my beautiful Jesus. But I also love to see myself in the scriptures. You know, God has given us this record for us to not just learn the kingdom principles in the kingdom way, not only to unveil the loveliness of Jesus more and more, 
but I believe it's also to show us. Now, now, what I mean by that is I'm not saying I am a Joseph. What I'm saying is that we're able to parallel our lives with what we have seen with our Bible heroes and sheroes, and we get to realize a few things. One of them is that we are not alone. You know, no matter how much you love God, and no matter how much you're loved by your father, because remember, Joseph was favored by his father, there can still come into our life um, jealousy and um, hatred, and there can come great difficulties. And this is certainly true of Joseph. So now that I've set the stage for you, I want to focus a little bit on the middle and the ending part of Joseph's life as we focus on the beauty of our Jesus. So I like to think of Joseph as he spent time in prison serving, by the way. I want you to know that the Bible is clear to tell us that he gained favor in the prison because of the way he served. I want to tell you prophetically that no matter what you're dealing with in your life right now, you can serve God well by serving those people around you. And the and I like to think, uh, even though the Bible doesn't talk a lot about it, I like to think how Joseph must have wondered, had God gotten it wrong when he had given him these visions and these dreams about how he was going to become, um, you know, a deliverer, he was going to be great. You know, he had to say, Lord, clearly I misheard you. Clearly um, I was meant for nothing more than to die in this prison. But I also imagine that he had to have kept singing God's praises. You know why? Because how could you come through what he'd come through and still serve with so much integrity unless you were holding on to God in spite of your circumstances? Well, we know that God had given uh, Joseph the ability to um, interpret dreams. And, you know, God has given you something that makes you unique for the body of Christ. And in the right moment of time, God will call on that special gift of God to move you to your next destination, to move you to your next level. That's just a word of prophecy for you because it's in the word of God. So what ended up happening is that God, who had given Joseph this amazing gift, used it to bring Joseph out of the pit, you might say, by bringing him out of the prison. And here's what was happening. The Pharaoh had had a nightmare. You ever had those kinds like where you wake up sweating and panting? Well, in essence, this Pharaoh had a nightmare, but he knew it was a spiritual dream and he knew that it needed answers. And as only God can create circumstances, it, the word came to him that Joseph was able to um, interpret dreams. So Joseph, a prisoner in the pit, was brought before the greatest uh, man in the land uh, at that time, and that was Pharaoh. And, and uh, he was able, uh, because of the Holy Spirit, able to discern Pharaoh's dream. And in it was a warning. There was a warning that for seven years there would be great plenty in the earth, and then for seven years there would be horrible, terrible famine. And so the call was to prepare. Well, Pharaoh put Joseph, right, the prisoner who was in the pit, okay, the one who was betrayed, the one who was lied about, the one who was falsely accused, he brought Joseph up and out of the pit and he made him second only to himself. Hmm. Does that sound another, like another type right there of our lovely Jesus? That he is the beloved of the father and the father who has full authority has given Jesus full control. So this is what happened. So Pharaoh made him, uh, over all of the province. In other words, everybody had to listen to Joseph. And this is where I want to move a little bit more into the beauty of our Jesus. Don't you know that the very brothers that sold Joseph into slavery, who deceived him, who tricked him, who betrayed him, that they were under a famine. 
And they, they ended up having to go into Egypt to seek supply. And you really need to read the story because it's, it is the best novel for sure. You don't need to read um, make-believe stories. The Bible has true stories that hold our attention even way better than the best of fiction. But the brothers come, and it's quite a bit of a, um, ah, like some tensions, you know? Because, like, Joseph knows who they are, but they don't know who he is, at least not yet. But then here it comes down finally. They finally do realize because Joseph tells them. And here's the thing I, I really want to contrast, not only the loveliness of Jesus with Joseph, but who we can be and who we should be in times of where we have been mistreated by those that we loved and trusted. So here's what we see is Joseph, even in his pain, he sought reconciliation and the brothers ended up repenting. You know, you've heard me speak on other videos, and it's so important. There is a kingdom of God way that reconciliation works. And the way that it works, very simply, it's the gospel, is that, you know, there is an offense, there is repentance, there is forgiveness, and there's reconciliation. And see, the heart of Jesus is always for reconciliation. In fact, this is why in the New Testament, we are said that we are ambassadors those that belong to God, we are ambassadors to the world, letting the world know that God wants to be reconciled to them. So Joseph sought reconciliation and it came through the repentance of the brothers. Joseph forgave them and Joseph blessed them. He blessed them in a number of ways. He blessed them by making sure that they had more than enough food and eventually bringing them to live in Egypt where he was and, um, and, and, and all of that nation was, um, was eventually saved because of the loveliness of Joseph, who is but a type and a shadow of the loveliness of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know that today Jesus is seeking reconciliation and he is longing for your repentance. Repentance you know, is the doorway through which we get to encounter the, the the blood of Jesus. It's where we get to encounter the goodness of God poured out through Emmanuel's veins for the forgiveness of our sins. It's where we get to experience complete and utter forgiveness and to enter into the blessings of God. Now, the Bible is very clear that it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Um, so you've already been experiencing the goodness of God, even if you're far away from him. And guess what? Joseph's brothers were experiencing the goodness of Joseph even before he confronted them with their sin. So the goodness of God leads us to repentance. But I want to tell you, repentance is an important part of this kingdom work because it brings us into reconciliation. And it certainly did bring uh, Joseph's brothers and eventually his beloved father, who thought that Joseph had died, into reconciliation with Joseph once again. So why? You know, it's easy if we stand back and look and say, well, if God loved Joseph so much, why would he let him be put through so much hell? And I like to think that we look at things backward. We think that God's ways are backwards and upside down. No, 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 no. Could we just agree that our ways are not his ways? Our thoughts are not his thoughts. And God's plan is always a great plan. So go with me to Psalms 105. I hope you have your Bible because I love for you to see this for yourself. I can tell you. But there's something that happens when with our own eyes, we see the word of God. Okay. So in this um, particular Psalm, they, uh, there's a memorial being remembered as to the faithfulness of God. And so I'm going to jump in to verse 16. So there's already been this foundation laid down about the faithfulness of God and how he's up to something great. So I'm going to give you, um, for some of you, a couple of ahas. Verse 16, and he called for a famine upon the land. He is God. Aha number one. God called for a famine on the land? Does that mess with your theology? 
I think it can mess with somebody's theology who doesn't believe that God ever uses anything negative or hard to bring about salvation. But God does. It wasn't Pharaoh that called for a famine. It wasn't Joseph that called for a famine. It was, And it wasn't Satan who called for a famine, who, by the way, has no authority to do anything outside the will of God. So verse 16, and God called for a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. What means that that means is no wheat was growing. Nothing was growing. He sent a man before them. Hmm. God called for a famine, but he sent a man ahead of them. Joseph names him who was sold as a servant. They afflicted his feet with fetters and they placed him in irons. Get this, until the time came for God's word to pass, until the word of Jehovah tried him. Mm. I got to tell you, when I found that hidden in plain sight in the scriptures many years ago, I had to get up and do the hallelujah dance. And I'm going to tell you why. Because in the, the, the truest rendition, it says in the fullness of time. You see, the kingdom of God works in something called the fullness of time. See, this is why God is always right on time. Not one minute too early, not one minute too late. In fact, it says that John the baptizer was born in the fullness of time. See, he had to be the forerunner for Jesus Christ. So he had to have been born to old Zechariah, okay, and old Elizabeth because of the timing because Jesus had to come on the scene at a certain time. That means John had to be born at a certain time. And so in the fullness of time, John was born. Well, guess what? In the fullness of time, same with Joseph. But listen to the next thing it says. Until the fullness of time, until God's uh, word came to pass, the word of God tested him. Wow. Now that's how it's written in the NLT, which I really enjoy. It says that until the fullness of time, right, the, the Lord tested Joseph. Do you realize that God has put some great things in you, but they have, there are things that must be worked out of you? Pride, arrogance, youthfulness. There's things that have to be worked out. Do you think that the prison was a place where some things got worked out of Joseph and, and some even better things got worked into Joseph? Yeah, absolutely. And so the Lord allowed this one whom he loved to be tested and tried until the fullness of time in which God intended to raise him up to be second in command only to Pharaoh. And to, here's the thing, save many peoples. This is always God's heart, to save many peoples. And it goes on to say that the king sent men and freedom. See, God can take who is your enemy. And Pharaoh, at that, at that point beforehand, was really his enemy because it was under the authority of Pharaoh that Joseph was held a prisoner. But look at verse 20. But the Pharaoh, the king himself, sent men and freed him and let him go and then made him lord of his house, not just a house, made him lord over his own house and ruler over all of his possessions. Okay, are you seeing the loveliness of Jesus again? Are you seeing how by the power of God that our Joseph, our Jesus came, despised, accused, and as a sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice, a perfect substitute, his righteousness and justification imputed to us. He was despised. He took upon himself our sins. But look what God did. He went into the tomb, but three days later, God raised him up. Look at this. He was freed. He um, was made Lord over God's house and ruler over all of God's possessions. You know, the word of God says that Jesus Christ 
is Lord over all. Well, I love how we see this unveiling of the beauty of our Jesus in the scriptures. And I want us to focus on that. But I say peripherally, it's okay for you to see how you have been purposed by God to, to fulfill some things in the earth. And I want you to know that wherever there is a treasure, there's always an enemy to try to stop you from receiving it because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I want you to know that as you stay faithful to God, even in your confusion, even in your weakness, even in your pit, even in your prison, keep serving God. Serve God by serving his people. Do it with integrity. Do it with honor. And I promise you that according to the word of God, don't take my word for it, take the word of God for it. You just keep your eyes on heaven. You keep your eyes on Jehovah. Now we get to say, keep your eyes on Jesus and you will watch the deliverer deliver you, deliver you from your situations. And then there's this word of lovely warning. As God delivers us, we will have this opportunity to either um, avenge ourselves, retaliate, um, you know, um, pay back those that have harmed us. But I love what Joseph said to his brothers. He said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for my good. He meant it for the whole nation's good and he me meant it for your good. You know, this is the same thing. God has allowed us to suffer many things. Why? Because God meant it for our good. Listen, others may have meant it for our evil, but God has always meant it for our good. The question is, will we trust him and put our confidence that he is a deliverer and a liberator? And can you then walk in the ways of our lovely Jesus? And can you be one who is willing to be reconciled? Are you one who is willing to hear repentance? And, and in that repentance, are you willing to forgive? And in that forgiveness, are you willing to be reconciled? This is the way of our great King. This is the way of Joseph, but more so, it's the way of Jesus. So today, I really invite you, just meditate and focus on the loveliness of Jesus in the scriptures, but most importantly, 